Labour MP Zara Sultana has spoken before about the shocking level of racist abuse she receives from members of the public. And this week she shared two particularly hateful emails. On Thursday, she tweeted... Having spent a couple of days away on bereavement leave, I came back to my emails today. This is what I found. Muslim women in politics shouldn't have to tolerate this. Go back to your country. You are in my country, not yours. You do not belong here. You live in my country. You live to all that is my country. Black facing brothers, you tough. One of our traditions. It is not for us to consider Britain first rising. We will soon get out get our heritage back and tough if you don't like it, Labour lost thousands of us to Brexit. Immigrants, the biggest reason. Disgraceful, horrible, racist email for anyone to receive. She then tweeted this morning, I posted about racist abuse email to me. This afternoon, I checked my emails again. Islamophobia must be called out. This one, you are not British. Stop pretending. I wouldn't move to China and pretend to be offended when the Chinese voice normal preferences for their own. Please stop pretending the racism card means anything. Yada, yada, yada. Ends with we see you as invaders rightly so stop pretending you are not disgusting and from everything i hear all too common for you know anyone who is a woman of color in in public life particularly people with left-wing opinions this isn't the first time zara sultana has spoken publicly about the racist abuse she receives this is part of a speech sultana gave in parliament this september muslim girls ask me what it's like I'd like to say there's nothing to worry about, that they would face the same challenges as their non-Muslim friends and colleagues. But Madam Chair, I, in truth, I can't say that because in my short time in Parliament, that's not my experience. So let me read out a few examples. How do you, how do you? One person, for example, wrote to me and I quote, Sultana, you and your Muslim mob are a real danger to humanity. Another wrote, I'm a cancer everywhere I go, and soon they said, Europe will vomit you out. A third called me a terrorist sympathizer and scum of the earth, and that sanitized of their unparliamentary language. I have discovered that to be a Muslim woman, to be outspoken and to be left wing is to be subject to this barrage of racism and hate. It's to be treated by some as if I were an enemy of the country that I was born in, as if I don't belong. It was summed up by these words in a handwritten letter, and I quote, if you can't stand the racism, perhaps you'd be happier going back to your country of origin, foreigner. Chair, it's worse when I speak up for migrants' rights in support of the Palestinian people, or criticize Tony Blair for the war in Afghanistan. One abusive letter said, and I quote, our cities are full of Muslims, send them to Pakistan. Another suggested that I must support the Taliban, all because I'm Muslim and against endless war. Madam Chair, this Islamophobia doesn't come from a vacuum. It's not natural or ingrained. It's taught from the very top. These fires are fanned by people in positions of power and privilege. When a far-right online account targeted me with racist abuse, suggesting that Muslims were an invading army, a Conservative MP replied, not calling them out for their racism by insulting me instead. Important and brave speech and also you know, refreshing to see someone um, relate these emails and this abuse to, I suppose, the, you know, the hate that is propounded at the, the top of, of politics and the media in our country. Um, I'll show you one more tweet. This is from Friday morning. So she tweeted, This morning, after a few difficult days, I woke up to find my inbox filled with messages of love and solidarity. From the bottom of my heart, thank you to everyone who has shown their support. They want to drive people like me out of politics. We won't let them. Obviously, solidarity with Zara Sultana before we say anything else. Um, Aaron, your, your comments on this. Well, we all know, Michael, that Islamophobia is a huge problem in this country. We know that. It's the, it's the permissible racism. And yet, you know, nonsense saying otherwise is just so frequently indulged. We were involved in wars which have killed, you know, a million plus people. And it's just not even seen as a problem because they're brown, because they're Muslim. We have people dying in the English Channel today. Yes, it doesn't matter. They're Muslim. They were white Europeans. How do you think that would be reported? And this goes all the way to the top of our allegedly progressive party. Keir Starmer, time of broadcast, it might change over the weekend. He hasn't extended his solidarity to, to, to Zara Sultana. What's going on? And that's not just Keir Starmer, you know, it could have been, I think any, any Labour leader not from the left probably would have been, done something similar. Very few Labour MPs have extended their solidarity to her. No Tory MPs have, as far as I can see, maybe one I haven't paid attention to. 
And that's because Islamophobia is, is seen as fine. It seems permissible. We, we've literally based foreign policy on it. So, yeah, it's important she talks about it because I think there are many well-meaning people out there, principled people who, who, who find that disgusting and don't know the scale of it. But I think anybody who's ever been in receipt of it or has a friend or a loved one who has, I mean, they know just how bad it is. We see it with Ash Sarkar, our colleague, Michael, the stuff that she's sent and she goes through. But it's seen as okay by many, many people because... Muslims are seen as secondary citizens, and, and Islamophobia is seen as a secondary racism. The Labour Party has a quite overt hierarchy of racism, as, by the way, does the Tory party, which, which sees Islamophobia as fine. It's interesting you say Keir Starmer hasn't responded to this, because you might say, oh, he's leader of the opposition, he can't respond to every incident of unpleasantness. He did find time to tweet in solidarity with the Israeli ambassador to the UK yeah. when she was subject to peaceful protests. No evidence of racial slurs, no evidence of racism whatsoever. Keir Starmer very, very quick to condemn those people. And he doesn't have anything to say now.